All right, this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today, I have a very special treat for you. I'm actually at another YouTuber's house. So, you know, I've seen his videos. Some of his videos have thousands of views, actually even more than some of my videos, and they're really inspiring and amazing to me. And when I was out in South uh, Florida, actually, I got invited over to his place. So this is like a really rare opportunity to check out what he's growing on here in South Florida. So his uh, YouTube channel, if you want to check it out, is Art Olivia, A-R-T-O-L-I-V-A. So let's go inside his backyard urban farm and check it out. So Art has tons of chickens here. He has the standard urban homestead. He's growing his food. Also got the chickens growing. It's amazing what he's doing here. So here's an amazing use of some barrels that aren't made this chicken feeder out of so let's go ahead and uh, remove the top here and this top made out of sheet metal and uh, right below the top here is basically a piece of a barrel that he uh, cut down and this was a big 55 gallon barrel that he basically cut it up into to form it to be the right size to uh, fit on top of this barrel which has been cut down into basically a tube so this tube this was a fit, uh, 25 gallon barrel and then he has a, the 55 gallon bottom piece and this bottom piece basically uh, keeps all the chicken feed in here and the 25 gallon is basically suspended a little bit higher up with these uh, rods. So he puts all the food in here and then puts the top on then it's basically weatherproof and rainproof and he just took a couple of barrels to make that. So I really like how Art basically reuses and repurposes these barrels to do so many creative things with. Next, we're gonna go into the garden to see how else he's using some of these barrels. So we're here at the entrance of Art's garden, and before Art's garden, he has all these chickens and stuff, so you have gotta make sure we keep this garden fence closed, because if not, it could be really disastrous. And uh, I walked up here, and I thought this was really cool. I mean, this is so awesome. You could take a look at the, all these things hanging here. These are Malbar spinach seeds. So actually, just recently, they had some frost here in South Florida. So the Malbar spinach didn't make it. They normally would be growing if they get, didn't get too cold, but it, it, it did get too cold, so the plant didn't make it, but it, it has all these seeds. So you can just basically pull out the seeds and they just drop on the ground. The chickens like to eat them, but also they've been dropping on the other ground, so then they'll basically just regrow and come back. And that's what I call hands-off gardening. These things grow, they grow so much greens, they also grow the seeds, they drop, then they grow more. The other thing that a lot of people don't know is you could literally take these seeds and uh, smoosh it in your hand. And look at that nice purple color. You could eat these. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't eat the little seed here, and this is the little seed. But you could eat the um, the seed pod, and this is like a little fruit. You got a nice purple color. Basically a nondescript flavor, but this stuff is super rich in antioxidants. Really healthy for you. Anyways, uh, without further ado, let's go into the garden. Check out his hanging hydroponic garden. So we're here in Art's garden, and we're gonna go over a few of the things he's doing here that's really cool. I got the grand tour from Art, and he let me come back here and uh, you know make a video for you guys to show you guys what he's doing. So he's using the Vertigrow system, uh, like you recently saw at the Urban Farmer video I just made, and uh, he's using the same pots, but he's doing a little bit differently. He's basically just bought the pots from them and then constructed his own framing to support them all. So uh, right here behind me, he has some lettuce, and he also has things like uh, collards growing, and um, tomatoes growing, and arugula growing, all kinds of different stuff growing in the vertigro system, which we're going to go over in a little bit. But also, we're going to talk about how he starts his seeds and how he waters his starts. It's an ingenious method. I've never seen anywhere else, and I can't wait to show you. I was so excited when I saw it. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how he repurposes common basically things that would get discarded to grow more food in and there we go the watering system is on a timer and it just came on if you heard it come on so anyways let's get started and show you around his place we're gonna first look at some of the containers he's growing in so now this is one part of Art's garden where he's using repurposed barrels to grow food in so if you can't get wine barrels you know you could usually find these barrels for really inexpensive and you could grow in them so this one is basically like uh, maybe like a half a barrel. He cut in half, put some, drill some drainage holes in the bottom, and then he even put a couple holes in the side to put some handles on. So now you could you know move this, and uh, this is one of my favorite trees right here. 
This is a loquat tree growing really well. Next door here, he took a smaller size barrel. He put a couple holes in it so you could like, you know, easily lift it up and move it if you have to. So this is a movable garden. If you live in like an apartment or a condo or maybe you're renting and you don't want to like make raised beds, you could just have a bunch of these and grow in them. And uh, out of each barrel, Art basically cut it three, two times to make three planting areas. So if you cut this, this is like the bottom and then this would be like the middle of it. And then if you flip one of those over up on top, that would be the whole barrel right there. And so you could actually take one of these off too and put that down and fill it up with the soil. And then you would have basically like three little planting areas out of using just one barrel. So uh, that's really ingenious. Just another way to contain soil and repurposing something that would normally get thrown away. So next, let's go over and see where Art is growing his dill and his parsley. It's really cool and I really got a kick out of it because actually I've been thinking about this for a while. So we're in Art's vertical garden where he has his hydroponics set up, the water dripping out of the top. He's growing some nice bell peppers here. And then as after the water actually waters the bell peppers, then it gets drained out to below it. And below it, he has a unique thing that you can use to grow some food in. And here it is right here. These are just standard milk crates that, you know, you would get your milk deliveries in. And, you know, I don't know if they use these anymore. But anyways, these make great planter boxes. And he's basically just put some, uh, some compost that's not fully composted. So it has still big chunks of stuff. And it basically just lines the bottom of the milk crate. And then he just grows in it. And it doesn't look like it's leaking out too much soil. If you do have a finer compost, you might want to line the inside with some something like landscape fabric or some um, leaves or something like that. Palm leaves would probably work pretty good. Load it up and then, uh, you know, plant your plants. I mean, this Italian parsley looks absolutely amazing. And let me tell you, it tastes as good as it looks. So here's a better example of how the system works. He has these uh, big pepper plants here and you can see the pepper is already starting to form and his watering system actually just went off. So you can see the water is literally dripping from the pot down to water and in this case it's his dill weed. <laughs> so this dill weed is growing amazing. He has about one, two, three, four, five little bunches of dill in there. Makes lots of dill and this is more than enough for him and his family to use. So let's take a look at what else he's growing in these milk crates. So here's yet another example. Once again, he's got the bell peppers up on top growing. The watering system just went off and then now the bottom, the water is dripping and watering this milk crate here. And you, you know, you could easily pick these up and move them if you're gonna move or if you want to move these or whatever. I mean, this is literally a portable garden. You could probably get these for free or cheap, you know, just common milk crates. And in this one, he's growing some stevia. And let me tell you, this stevia is delicious. So good. Right next door here, we have, uh, once again, he's using a, a barrel that he cut off to use instead of the milk crate. So I really like the use of um, using things that would be normally abandoned. So repurposing things like milk crates, you know, and uh, barrels to grow food in. So this has some basil in here. And this basil smells amazing. So here he's growing oregano once again in the milk crate. So he's got a black one on the bottom, another red one, and a black one. So this is raised up off the ground so that you don't have to bend over. And you could use those to raise it up. And uh, that's definitely a cool thing. I've often thought about doing this, but I never did. And I'm glad that I see somebody finally doing it. And uh, if you are going to plant oregano, um, you can see this oregano really loves this setup. It's just growing, growing over the uh, milk crates and just literally taking over. Um, you know, you want to plant oregano in its own container or own raised bed because I planted oregano with all my other herbs and you know what? It took over the bed. So if you like oregano, that's a good thing. Otherwise, that's not a good thing. So this is where Art actually starts his seedlings. So we have these seedling trays here and these are like the big, large uh, seedling trays you can see. And uh, he starts some uh, chives in this one. He has some uh, collard greens over in this one and some basil and stuff. But what's really cool about the setup here is how he waters his plant starts. So if you see here, there's a drip tube up top here. And then he basically has a small um, 
drip line, so it goes from like a half inch to like a, a quarter inch, and he goes down. So I was looking at this and saying, how does he water all these starts with the drip line actually going through the middle of the flat? Well, the way he does that is basically he just brings that through the middle of the flat and the water comes out. And then once the water comes out here, this whole bottom layer is basically, you can think of it as a shelf, and he lined it with plastic, and then the edge of the shelf, he basically put some uh, one by two to make it like a little trough. So basically, he puts water in the trough area, it fills up, much like a hydroponic system would, and the water basically wicks into the soil, gets the soil wet, and then that waters all his plant starts. So this thing just goes on and on and on. It's like about 40 feet long where he has an area to do all his plant starts. Absolutely ingenious. And also being off the ground, I mean, this thing's about four feet off the ground. You know, he's going to have minimal bugs and slugs and things like that crawling on the plant starts. Absolutely ingenious that he did it, did it this way. And I'm glad I learned about this and can now share with you guys. Next, we're going to talk about the vertigo system he's using to grow his tomatoes. Uh, vertically. So these are the vertigo system that Art's using here and instead of buying the system that you maybe saw at the Urban Farmer just my last episode you know he just basically bought these uh, special pots and he uh, got these pots and he basically stacks uh, two up on top of each other diagonally because they are stackable and he's growing in a mixture of uh, peat moss and some uh, basically perlite and in this bunch he has uh, arugula and this arugula is growing like mad um, in the hydroponic system and it's even going to flower and I hope you guys all know how much I love to eat arugula flowers and it's the first time I got to eat arugula flowers on this trip I love arugula flowers and encourage everybody to eat their arugula flowers they are so delicious and yes arugula when it gets this large when it does go to bolt and go to flower you could definitely still eat the large leaves they just tend to get a lot spicier so most people tend to eat the smaller leaves you know but the large leaves are also uh, good to eat. You could eat them in salads, chop them up. You could also put them in a blender, make green smoothies out of them. And my favorite use is actually to juice them. So here in the vertigo system, you could you have four planting spaces per pot in each corner. And Art has some um, nice big bell peppers on two corners. And then he also has a lots of spinach. So the spinach looks like it's growing really well in this uh, hydroponic system. And uh, I could vouch for that. <laughs> Next, we're going to look at some of the peppers, lettuce, and tomatoes that he's growing vertically in this vertigo system. And we're going to talk more about how he basically put this together. So here is the lettuce growing in the vertigo system. Once again, he has all this amazing lettuce growing. And you know what? It's definitely important. And, you know, you're going to save a lot of money here, especially in South Florida. I mean, I was just at the farmer's market, and lettuce sells for $3.99 a pound. So, I mean, he has just pounds and pounds and pounds of lettuce here ready to pick any day of the week for a salad for him and his family. So besides the lettuce, the main thing he's growing is tomatoes, and that's because his wife wanted some tomatoes, so he grew tomatoes in a big way, and let's check those out. So here's one of his pepper plants growing in the vertigo system, and you know, these systems are amazing, and I might have to get a vertigo system or something going on, because it just maximizes space, you know, I mean, in this small space, he's growing, well, two pepper plants, you could probably have up to four. And just this one pepper plant right here has six little peppers that are going to ripen up here one of these days. And, you know, I love my peppers. This is Art's tomato garden. Basically, this whole system is all hanging. And when I first saw his videos, I was really impressed with all the hanging tomatoes because guess what? If your tomatoes are hanging, they're going to grow down naturally. Then you don't have to bend over to harvest them. And plus, you're going to save lots of time because I have to worry about my tomatoes growing up and I have to train them to grow up and trellis them. But when you grow them down, they just hang naturally and no trellising required. The other thing that he's doing here is he is using determinate tomatoes. So the determinate tomatoes have a specific lifespan and basically all those tomatoes will come on at once and the plants don't get quite as big. So that's really smart because we had indeterminate plants, the plants would just grow and then they'd vine all over and go everywhere. But these determinate plants, um, grow just enough so that they just about don't even hit the ground so it's really nice and I do want to once again mention they did just have an unexpected frost here um, in South Florida so that's why some of these plants don't look that good but he is also still harvesting tomatoes because he just has to get in here and do some trimming and clipping but man these plants are literally loaded with 
a lot of tomatoes and it's more than him and his actually family could eat. So next we're going to talk about how he put this Vertigro system together. Basically as I mentioned earlier he just bought the pots from the Vertigro company which there's a patent on the pots and then basically he built everything else instead of using you know what they would supply. So let's take a look at a section that he left empty so we can do just that. How he put this system together is he bought the Vertigro pots from the Vertigro company and then he basically suspends these with a half inch PVC pipe. Really simple, real easy. Then up at the top here, <laughs> he's got a real good use of a nail. He literally just put a hole in this and he has a, a hanger here and he just basically puts the nail through it to hold it in place. He has these posts in the ground, landscape timbers with a big pole here that runs on top that basically takes all the weight. And then he has some framing up top just to keep the whole system stable. Then he has this uh, basically half inch drip tube running right next to each one. Then he comes off with a little T and he tees off to a uh, one quarter inch drip tubing that goes down to each pot. And uh, I guess one of the problems he ha had was this, uh, the line would basically flap around. So what he did was he just got some, uh, once again, repurposed water bottles and put a hole in there so that when the water comes down, it basically this is an inverted funnel. So the funnel basically funnels the water down into the plant's roots where it needs to be. So by doing a setup like this, you get a lot of stuff. You get to construct some stuff. And, you know, I, th I think this is a really cooler system than the system that the Vertigro sells. That actually costs quite a bit of money. So he saved a significant amount of money by doing it himself. I guess if I was going to do this, I might raise everything up a little bit because you could stack these, you know, like five tall or even more and have more growing space. To plant foods so that you could grow and growing vertically is definitely growing smart next we're gonna look into this hydroponic system that feeds all these drip tubes that's on a timer so that he and how he waters this whole vertigo system which is right behind me so now what he's using is basically a big water reservoir and once again <laughs> the theme of this video is repurposed he's repurposing these totes here so this tote holds probably like 200 something gallons of water. He basically fills up with his uh, hose here, could turn that on, and actually has a float valve. So he could leave that on and basically it fills up and then stops. That's like the float valve in your toilet. Really cool. And then he basically dilutes his uh, or fertilizer in with the water. And then uh, a couple, t couple times a day, what happens is he has this, uh, this timer here, which is, has this nice rain cover. <laughs> And this timer comes on and will basically turn the pump on. The pump will then pump the water out of this tote up through this big uh, PVC tube and then get it distributed throughout the whole raised vertical garden. And then it'll come into each of the tubes where it's teed off and then feed his whole garden. So this one reservoir feeds his whole garden. So definitely really cool that he repurposed the tote to do just that. And you know, besides just using the reservoir for fertilizer, you could also use these totes and other things, especially here in South Florida where it rains a lot, for uh, as a rain barrel and to store water off your roof. So next, we're going to go over and take a look at a rain barrel that you could set up, and I'm going to show you how to do it, and also let you know a really good source to get these totes, these large totes, and also rain barrels. So another thing you could do with those big totes or even with the barrel like this, this is a 60 gallon barrel, you could collect your rainwater. So how you would make this uh, barrel a, a rain barrel, two simple ways. Number one, you're going to basically cut a hole in the top and put a screen on there. That's very important to put a screen to catch all the debris, but more importantly, not let any mosquitoes into your rain barrel because they could lay eggs and you'd be a mosquito breeding ground. That would not be a good thing. The next thing besides the screen on the top is you're going to want to get a hose spigot and this bunghole adapter thing. <laughs> so what you do is you drill a hole, you put a, you drill a hole with a hole saw in here and you'd fish this in from the back side and this would have a uh, basically a rubber gasket. You'd push it through and then you would screw this tight so that this would be in between the barrel. Then this is threaded on the outside to hold the nut to hold it in there and then it's also threaded on the inside. So then basically you would just put your spigot in there, tighten it up, and then you would raise your barrel up off the ground. If you wanted to get some more pressure, you'd run a hose to this. And as long as your rain 
barrel is sitting higher than where the, the water is coming out, you're going to get decent flow to be able to water all your plants. So besides the rain barrels, you could also have a rain tote, and that's basically just collecting all your rainwater in a big tote. Now this barrel holds about 55 to 60 gallons of water. The totes could hold 200 or 300 gallons, depending on the size of the tote, and there's different kinds of totes available. So next, we're going to go over and look at some of the totes and the barrels that Art has here because that's the business that he's in actually. He uh, uses and reuses and repurposes these totes for people that are into gardening and into other things. So uh, we're going to look at some of the totes and barrels that he ha has and I'm going to talk to you more about those next. So you can see we have all these barrels here that Art makes available to you guys and he has all different kinds of barrels. So a lot of these barrels were either holding things like soaps and detergents and some of these were even our food grade barrels so once again I always encourage you to get the food grade barrels if you're using them for gardening because then they've only ever held food like maybe syrups and you know sugars and oils and olives or you know salt salted fish all kinds of things that comes in these barrels so uh, it's important to get food grade barrels if you're gonna be collecting your rainwater to use in your garden otherwise you, there may be soap residues which you know will also work too. So Art has many different barrels available for you to use here. And here's just one style. This style basically has a whole top that comes off. So this style makes it really easy to get in there to basically uh, put in the spigot in the bottom. So this barrel here is really good. It has two basically holes in the top and there's little caps that go in there. And what I wanna do with one of these kinds of barrels is basically put these underneath my deck and tie them together to store water for the summertime because in California where I live it rains a lot in the winter and none in the summertime so each barrel could have its specific use and each barrel uh, you know cost a little bit more or less depending on how many he has and he has a lot of these these white barrels so I get I bet they're a great price and in most cases it's much less expensive to buy a barrel like this and then basically make your own uh, rain barrel than going to a store and buying you know like a virgin uh, rain barrel to buy these are really inexpensive to buy and you could easily put together your own rain barrel and especially in a place like Florida you should definitely be using your rainwater to water next let's look at these some of these totes and these totes are my favorite things and actually uh, per gallon they're much more cost effective than even these large 55 to 60 gallon barrels to collect water so if you have a nice side of your house where you could put a tote or two or one on each downspout, man, you could have water for a long time to water your plants. And the other thing I want to talk about is on these totes, you know, the totes hold a lot more water, so there's a lot more water pressure, which means if you want to do a drip system, it's going to be really easy to do a drip system out of a big tote when you have hundreds of gallons of pressure behind the water versus, you know, 55 gallons. On a 55 gallon uh, barrel, you, you know, there's not a whole lot of pressure, so you couldn't really do a really good drip system but with a tote you could so let's take a look at these totes next so art has all these totes here available and I love even collecting the rainwater in the totes more so than the barrels because it's just more functional and usable like I said earlier you have a lot of basically water pressure at the spout here and each of these um, totes already have a built-in valve and this is a nice heavy-duty ball valve that you would use to basically have the water come out you just need some plumbing fixtures from Home Depot to adapt it into your drip line and you could literally put this on a timer and you know basically have everything watered on a timer on a drip system with one of these totes. This tote here happens to be 275 gallons of water so you would need you know at least you know five six barrels to equate one tote. He also has a 330 gallon tote which even holds more water so you know if you're gonna get a tote I just say go for the 330 gallon it's not much bigger but you know it holds you know about 50, 55 more gallons than one of these guys. So totes are definitely very good to use. So another good thing to do with the totes and the barrels are use them as thermal mass inside your greenhouse. So in the summertime, basically the, the thermal mass will keep your greenhouse a little bit cooler. And in the wintertime when the sun comes out, the thermal mass will basically heat up the water inside the uh, totes or the barrels and release the uh, warm warmth at night. And uh, he has 
basically barrels and totes in both this uh, basically white or kind of translucent clear and also in black. So the black ones definitely are best for use uh, with thermal mass. And also if you're going to have standing water in there, the black ones will probably give you less uh, you know, algae growth if you're not constantly running water through there. So one of the questions you might be asking yourself, well, hey, John, I want to catch my rainwater using one of the barrels or the totes, but you know what? It looks just a little bit too industrial to have in my backyard. And, you know, my wife would tell me something about it because, I mean, for us guys, I mean, it's all good. It's functional. It works. It's holding water, but some people are more concerned about the aesthetics. So what you could do in that case is, you know, you want to basically hide it. And you could get something like this, basically this uh, fencing on a roll, and just roll it around the barrel or roll it around your tote and you could grow plants up it binding plants that will basically cover the whole um, fence and you know basically hide the tote or the rain barrel the other thing you could do is maybe just build a fence around it or put like this uh, roll out bamboo screening material to hide it and make it look nice so I've had a lot of fun here at Arts and you know besides the barrels uh, holding your water make great exercise implements so if you want to contact Art to get a tote or a uh, barrel, you can call him at 561-628-0635. He serves the South Florida area. So once again, this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time, and keep on growing.